Okay. We must be on. We are? Yeah, see us. Well, yeah, I'll see us though, yeah. We're here. Hey, folks. Welcome to the Tuesday night edition of UG TV. I'm Wild Bob, and this is Wild Ronnie over here. Just uh, chomping at the bits. Chomp, get chomp. down and dirty with you here about some political matters. I don't hardly understand. Something is different about my broadcaster here. Okay, that's a little better. Hello, everybody. Okay, the mics are working. Do I get to say hello again? Nah, you've told hello, me. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hello Look, is this the don't shampoo. go on long, so don't change the channel yet. Hello is the shampoo that glorifies your hair, so hello everybody, hello. That's what did it to mine, folks. Yep. You want hair like mine, use Halo shampoo. It's Halo Dolly, ain't it? Yeah. You remember Hello Lind Hello Linden? Yeah. <laughs> Old Lyndon didn't run no more after that, did he? No, he didn't. No. Uh, a lot of people who wouldn't vote for JFK. There's a lot of dead people voting in Texas that year. Yeah, but a lot of people that wouldn't vote for a Catholic, said we ain't voting for that Catholic, we just voting for Lyndon. Yeah. That's the way I feel about uh, John McCain when I voted for Sarah. Right, I voted for Sarah. Perry. And I might have to vote for uh, Paul Ryan. Paul Ryan this year. <laughs> you know, uh, my dad was uh, a very good man, but back in his earlier years, he was very prejudiced. And one of the reasons he started voting Republican was because the Democrats... Uh, ran a Catholic in 1928. He held a grudge a while, didn't he? Uh, he held a grudge for a while, didn't right. he? Right. Uh, who was that? Uh, wasn't Will Wind Wilkie? Who was that? Yeah, well, I, I, I knew, I knew. Alf Landon? No, it wasn't Alf Landon. Alf Landon was from Oklahoma, ran the uh, against uh, FDR. Uh, I don't know, he lost. And, J. Er and Herbert Hoover won. And uh, I'll think of it in just a minute. I, I knew it a while ago, but sometimes my memory just slips me a little bit. Uh, uh. Yeah, I understand. I can tell you're slipping. <laughs> Can't get everything the way I want it tonight for some reason. Okay, there's that, but I don't want to. Folks, we'll get our contraption lined up here in a minute. Well, we're on the air. I'm just trying to make us pretty, but oh, looks like I'm going to have to give yeah. up. Yeah, it kind of distracts me when I can't see myself. I can understand why that would be distracting. Right. Uh, we'll welcome you here. You know, we got uh, the end of the uh, registration or, or uh, city council, city, city uh, political races coming up Thursday day after tomorrow. So if any of you want to run, you better get in there and get your 25, 30, 45, 50, however many names you want to take down there. Uh, to certify you as a candidate, and uh, you know you got uh, you got two factions uh, running against one another again. Uh, <laughs> ain't <neither> one of them. <laughs> and uh, ain't neither one of them worth a hoot if you want to know the truth about it. Uh, I don't even know why they want to be in politics uh, uh, other than just the fame and the glory. Because they got nothing to offer the people. Well, I know, but it ain't, that's not, you got it all wrong. It's what the people have to offer the I know, candidate. I know they're concerned about what people have to offer them, but they have nothing to offer to the people. 
only thing Wayne Kiss had to offer the people was to meet privately with the uh, the Pilot Utilities Board and arrange uh, uh, where nobody could control their rate making anymore in the water and sewer situation. So uh, he did that. That was with his cousin, uh, Kenny, and he set that up. And if I had chosen to run this year, I would have made a very determined effort. Whose cousin? Huh? Whose cousin? What? Whose cousin? Uh, Wayne Kitts is a cousin to uh, Kenny Barry. That's going to get complicated. Huh? <laughs> I said, that's going to get complicated. Uh, so, uh, but if I had decided to run this year, I would have very strongly advocated, advocated placing the La Follette Utilities Board uh, under uh, a department in city government since uh, the Pollock owns it anyhow. Just do away with a blooming power board, utility board, draws all kind of money, takes all kind of trips, wastes all kind of money, uh, causes your rates to go up and everything else, and they don't do a, a blooming bit of good. You could put the utilities, uh, the Pollock utilities right as a department of city government and run it like it ought to be run. But we'll leave that to somebody else to to work on. Uh, me, I'm kind of tired of the uh, scene for the public uh, uh, political uh, uh, situation goes. Uh, uh, you don't have anybody in there that uh, is qualified uh, to do anything other than. Uh, Spend seventy some thousand dollars on the <coughs> library, and I believe that's what they spend. How much? Was it seventy some thousand on a roof? Yeah, on on the library. Sixty something thousand for a roof. They paid about a half million for the library. Oh, I know that. I'm talking about for the roof. You know, but it was sixty some thousand on the redo, wasn't it? Just the roof. Just uh, to add. Just to put the outside on. Yeah, but they'd already spent. Uh, Sixteen to seventeen thousand on that roof. Yeah. So that that burned it but up. But it didn't over. look like a roof. Uh, I know. You know they, they spent all that money on the roof, and it didn't look like a roof. So they spent another sixty some thousand dollars making it look like a roof. Yeah. Well, here's the next thing that you got to think about. They have decided down Jacksburg to revisit the budget. So they're going to introduce a tax increase yet? Yeah, sure they will. Sure they will. Well, you know, uh, this deal on uh, a half percent increase on the sales tax, you realize the state of Tennessee always, already has the highest sales tax in the United States? Hmm. It already has the highest state sales tax. The state part? Huh? Just the state part? Right. Well, they've got 10 cents on New York and California, I think. Yeah, but the state park here okay, is higher. Okay, I agree with, I agree with what, that. What state, I don't know. It what may the be state true. of Tennessee gets is higher than any other state in the Union. But and we don't have an income tax. Well, no. Well, it'd be, it'd be foolish to uh, pass an income tax here uh, uh, in... Uh, Campbell County because ain't nobody got no income to start with. You know, all of our uh, money that comes in from uh, uh, tourism, you know, it's, it's, you know, nobody really realized that during hard times that that would be the first thing to go. Yeah, I know. I said that a long time ago. Wasn't nobody listening to this old fool. I know that, but see, people just don't believe that sort of thing. And I, you know, I really wonder, I question what in the world our school system here in this area has been teaching all these years. I went down to an est establishment that Alfred I, Smith. Yeah, that's right, Al Smith. Uh, I went down to an establishment that I trade with quite much, you know, and uh, uh, I have a uh, sales tax uh, uh, 
on file with them where I don't have to pay the sales tax. And I went down and uh, uh, the manager had taken some days off. So uh, when I bought my stuff up there, some of it was personal and some of it was for the business. And uh, I uh, told them I wanted to, you know, this to be uh, with no tax. And you know what the sales lady told me? She says, I'm not a manager. I'm not allowed to give anybody a discount. <laughs> what did you tell her? Well, after I kindly realized that she believed by knocking the sales tax, tax off that she was giving me a discount, she had never been taught if I buy something for $10 and I got to pay a uh, $1 tax, that's all the state's going to get. But if I buy something for $10 and they collect no tax and I sell it for $30, then the state's going to get $3 instead of $1. Mm -hmm. But she still felt like that was a discount. I said, that's not a discount. I'm paying the actual amount. I said, you're just knocking the tax off. Well, I just, I just don't know how to do that, you know. And I said, simple, you just don't add the tax on. Did you get fixed up? Uh, Did you get no, 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 no. She never was able to do that. Scared to death of a manager, and the manager scared to death of her home office, you know. And everybody walks around scared to death all the time, you know. And uh, so, uh, no, I had to pay tax on those items. And so when I sell it, I ain't going to pay no tax on it. Well, did you let her keep it? Huh? Did you keep no, it? No, I, I got it. But when I sell it, I, I'm not going to pay any tax on it. I paid tax on it one time. Well, I'll tell you what. What aggravates me is you see 90, better than 90% of the people in the store running the cash register can't make change. And I think if all you're going to educate kids to do is work at McDonald's, you ought to at least take them how to make, teach them how to make change. If you know how. Well, there might be a problem with the parents teaching them how to make change. And it and might also teachers? be a problem with the teachers teaching them how to make change. You know, it's so easy when you push that cash register, you, you take, take in a dollar and a half and uh, what they bought is a dollar and a quarter. And uh, he pushed the button, he shows up 25 cent change back, you know. Uh, but you're right, kids can't make change anymore. No, no. And I don't know why in the world uh, uh, Obama came out with the slogan, Change You Can Believe In. I mean, you got to believe that what they're giving you back is correct because they don't have no idea what they gave you back. Well, I know it. If you accidentally. Stop them in the middle and give them some more money. They might, you might well just get in line. They are absolutely lost. Now, now I will say this. Uh, I, I trade down at, uh, I'm going to put in a plug for Woodson's uh, Shell. And those girls down there, they do know how to figure. Yeah, but and, they're not kids. I mean, yeah. they still up here young, but most of them are a little older. <laughs> well, that's very, very true, you know. And, uh, uh, I, I really, I don't know what they teach in school anymore, you know. Uh, uh, you can't spell. That, that's the reason texting has become so popular. Because you don't have to know how to spell the text. Well, most of them have got a word completion feature on them anyway. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason I think they, they enjoy uh, texting, because they don't have to know how to spell nothing. And... Uh, I, you know, they can't spell. Most of, a lot of them cannot read and understand what they're reading. And they certainly cannot add, subtract, nor multiply. What about divide? 
Well, they're integrated. Well, they they divide, they're, they've learned how to divide everything you got it. with a self. You know, they they think everything ought to be uh, uh, given to them to divide it up with them. You know. You reckon they know how to solve for X? Yeah. You know, I went in the house the other day trying to collect some money off some people. They didn't have no money, naturally. And you know what, one of them was about 42, 43 years old. The other one was about 28, something like that. I said, you know, times are getting so tough. Says, I'm probably going to have to get a job. And neither one of them had ever had a job <laughs> in their life. How old are they? One's 42 and one's 28. Two different families, I mean, you know. And they had to get a job after all these years? Yeah. I'm going right. to get me yeah. one in to get that bad. The time, times were getting so tough that they couldn't live off their check. I don't know where I got that pencil. Let's see. Uh, I don't know, but you ain't got nobody in the family way, have you? <laughs> I must be myself. I had the pencil. <laughs> if you happen to go down the ditch of concrete, they can spell and make change too, can't you, Bob? Uh, and, and they can absolutely deliver concrete. Yeah, yeah, they can do that, and they're good people to do business with. They can figure the job for you if you give them a little information, and they'll get it so close you'll think you figured it yourself, I even if you know I what you're doing. You, all you got to do is tell them how many square feet, and they will come up with the cubic yards that you need to do that job. And they can tell you, they can tell you how much... Uh, I mean, everything you need to install a legitimate septic system and sell you the stuff to do it with. Them they guys can, are sharp. They can do that. Now, I would like to say that they're some of the finest concrete purveyors I've ever heard of. Well, they're good people, you know. Uh, they got big, bright yellow trucks. Uh, they deliver what they say they're going to, when they say they're going to, and for the price that they said they were going to deliver it for. And another thing I'd like to mention is that there fella down there in Sawmill Holler right in the middle of the road, he's a pretty good figurer too. Well, I believe he is too, you know. He, figured out, Wilson? he has figured out how to pack that propane into those tanks. Yeah, stomp her down. Yeah, and he flavors it, it you know. Pull you can shoes, get it. Pull the shoes off and get by the stomp just like... Uh, uh, what was her, what was her name that was stomping all them grapes that time on the, uh, Lucy? Just like Lucy, Lucy was um, stomping them grapes. Whatever you know. her name was. Uh, Edith? Lucy no, not Edith. I love Lucy. Who was that? What, her name wasn't Edith. What was it? Huh? What was her buddy's name? Oh, Desi Arnaz? No, not her husband, her friend. Oh, Fred, Fred and Ethel. Ethel, that's yeah. it. Mertz. Yeah. Ethel Mertz. Fred and Ethel Mertz. Well, Digger's down there in the middle of Sawmill Holler, right in the middle of the road, 5625444, if you need to talk to him about right. propane. He's got that flavored kind and everything. Well, he's got the mesquite and whatever whatever you need. He could probably even mix in a little bit of that there Cinderella oil in there and um, get rid of them might, mosquitoes. Might do that, just might do that, you know. And... Uh, so I'm going to have to make a little visit my uh, little propane you, tanks. That you, you, you reckon he can put that Cinderella flavor in and get rid of mosquitoes? And what? Put a little of that Cinderella flavor in there and get rid of mosquitoes? Probably. Probably You've seen that. them Cinderella, Cinderella calorie candles, ain't you? Yeah, I've seen those, yeah. Maybe it's Centronella. Anyway... That's all I know about it, and I ain't changing it. Well, I, he, I mean, he does a good job. If you need something worked on, you, you're getting ready to go into the uh, season where you're going to need some heat here in a little bit. I'm sure that he's already got a supply of Mr. Heaters in. And if you have any problem with any of the propane heaters that you have or any of your propane appliances, you take them on down to Diggers, and he probably... He probably can pick some right up for you, and uh, so uh, you need to see him. That's uh, five six two five four 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 for all your propane needs. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's the way it goes. 
Well, all you folks out there in television land, we're out there in internet land. We're what glad you could tune land, in tonight. What it is, you know, uh, we have some, we have some, a uh, lot of people that, uh, you know, uh, hit on to the show. We appreciate you watching it. We've uh, got, we've got viewers all the way from Idaho to, I know, I know to got, North Carolina. You reckon Tokyo Joe's not tuning in from Tokyo? I don't know. He may not have internet over there. Right. I don't know whether they let him have internet where he's at. Maybe not. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> but uh, we do, we have a good... You got stuff. anything for sale? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got some stuff. I'm going to tell you what, i got some of the prettiest tomatoes that I've had. She ain't got no scuppernongs. No, I didn't bring any scuppernongs. I'll tell you what, there wasn't any on the market uh, when I went over on Monday. Uh, but they'll be coming on. They were, they were just uh, a little preview I brought, you know, but the muscadines was just and the stuffernons will come on. That was an appetizer, that, wasn't that, it? That was just a witch advertise. But I got some of the prettiest tomatoes and best tasting tomatoes I've had all year long. And I'll tell you how good they are. The old man uh, bought a box last week. He bought another box of tomatoes this week. What's he doing with them? Well, I think his, he and his, he got, I think he got four or five kids that are married and have homes. I figured he maybe he's making tomato wine or something. It might be. Uh, where how that be? I, I bet that would be rough. I bet it would be. I don't know where you can make wine out of tomatoes. It might be too acid. Well, for a minute. Yeah, I don't know. Where, well, you know more about that than I do. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't necessarily the tomatoes that fermented. <laughs> that was all those other juices that were in there. Well, do you think you could, if I could make some, you'd want well, it any? Didn't, it didn't ferment. It, it rotted <laughs> what it did. What Let me it? ask it a different way. If I was to right. make some, would you try it? No, I doubt it. I don't think it would. About like Digger won't like that <laughs> torture you picked for me. So, I, I don't know. I don't know whether I can stand to look at a tomato myself. I eat a banana split in 19, 1967, Thanksgiving in 19, no, Thanksgiving in 1968, I ate a banana split at the Tennessee Drive-In. They're out of business now, so I ain't hurting their business, but it's true, and got food poisoning. And I ain't eaten a banana split since. I didn't eat another banana for four right. or five years. Right. Yeah, but well, I, it doesn't bother me about the tomatoes, you know. Uh, in fact, I'm I'm gonna go up here in a little bit and have me a one of them tomato sandwiches. They're pretty good. I've got some growing at my house. They ain't real big, but they're real good. Yeah, I know. I, somebody brought me, give me some uh, local grown tomatoes the other day, and I, I ate them. They got a good taste, a real good taste. I gotta find some goats. I wanna buy me some goats right soon. Why? Well, goats. You know, goats. I've been looking for some full size. I want. I want to. I want a couple of milking goats. Well, I don't want milking goats especially, but I want some with climbing gears. Them big and got handlebars on them, you know. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I want to make a lawnmower out of mine. Right. Well, you can do that. Uh, I, want a, I want a couple of milking goats. And, uh, mm -hmm. folks, I'm in the market for probably a Guernsey or Ayrshire. No better Jersey. Or Dexter milk cow. No Jerseys? Oh, Jersey's okay. I I like the Guernsey. You know Guernsey's milk is a golden color as opposed to the other uh, cows being white. That's just blood. Huh? That's just blood. They have a, they have a higher butter content than most cows. What was that the other one you said? Well, Ayrshire. I never heard of that. Yeah, that, that, that's a... Uh, they, they look very much like a Guernsey, and they may be just a little bit larger cow, not much, about the same size as a, a, a Guernsey, which a Guernsey is a, a medium-sized cow, but now Dexter is a little bitty cow. No, about no Dexters. Right. Uh, I have to have a roommate named Dexter. Uh, a Guernsey, a good producing Guernsey, will produce somewhere between 14 and 15,000 pounds of a milk a year during their lactation period. Fourteen or fifteen thousand pounds. Right. What kind of Guernsey? That's a Guernsey. I don't have figures on the others, 
uh, except uh, on the... Uh, That's a lot of milk. On, on the Holsteins now, a Holstein will produce somewhere around 30,000 pounds of milk a year. <laughs> but per pound of feed fed, the Guernsey will produce more milk per pound of feed fed than the Holstein will. What about, a, what about what about Angus? <laughs> well, I, I never have been able to get down low enough milk one of them days. <laughs> yeah, you sure better look before you bend over and make sure you're milking the right I, one. I, I, I raised a bunch of Angus and uh, uh, beautiful, beautiful cows. But uh, your Holstein, it still makes money for them to... Uh, have to feed them more feed because milk brings so much more than the feed brings. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, but you got to sell it. There's a lot of sell raw milk. You, how you gonna sell it? Right. Yeah, that's true. So uh, I'm looking for a Guernsey. If you know somebody's got uh, a full blooded Guernsey. Uh, What's the name of them kind that's got marked like police cars? The what? Them kind that's marked like police cars. What the guy you talking about? The belted ones? Yeah. That's a belted Galloway. Galloway? Galloway. Galloway. Well, I want to get one and try to breed them so they'll have a star on them, like my uh, shirt. <laughs> I could get a fortune out of them. I'd sell them to P.T. Barnum Circus. Right, there you go. You saw that goat they turned into a unicorn, uh, didn't you? What? You ever see that goat they turned into a unicorn? Yeah, I heard about it. Uh, Barnum and Bailey. It ain't been 20 years ago or so. They had this pretty white goat, and they, when it was little, they cut its horns off and moved one to the middle and let it grow and straighten right. it. Yeah. Growed them a unicorn and showed it. Right. In true P.T. Barnum style. Right. All he needed was an egress. Right, yeah, yeah. Everybody ate one of them egresses. Yeah, I wish we had more for some politicians. Right, that's that right. We would like to egress a few of them here when this coming election comes about. I think we need to start a new philosophy. Let's just make fun of all of them. That way, I mean, they're well, all mad at us. They ain't nobody running. They ain't mad at us. Don't nobody love us anyhow, so we might as well just raise came along. That way, we it. won't pick no losers. Huh? We won't pick no losers no, that way. Is that that right? We won't, we won't run none of their, none we, of their we can take, we integrity. Can take, we can uh, throw off on the uh, uh, Cliff Jennings, Wayne Kitts fashion, uh, faction, or we can throw off on uh, uh, Mike uh, Stanfield, Hanford, Hatmaker fashion, and uh, we can leave poor old Joe alone right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, he... <laughs> I've known Joe all about all my life. I ain't gonna bother Joe. He ain't bothered me. Right. He ain't hardly as low down as some of them. I know that. I appreciate him. He, I think he's had kept a pretty level stance on most of the issues. Well, there's some but of the he's others. not even up for election. They some of the others kept a pretty even keel. as wrong all the time. Right. Yeah, but they're even keel going the wrong direction, yeah. you know. And about like that ship. <laughs> They ran over that destroyer <laughs> out in the Gulf of Hormuz. I believe I'd had, wouldn't have had enough, uh, a little, uh, enough sense not to turn from that big boy. Well, what did he do? I just saw the headline. I didn't do. Uh, he made he a uh, turn right in front of the uh, that big tanker, and I guess he thought he, he you know, he had to ride away. And, you reckon he uh, thought tankers had brakes? Huh? Reckon he thought tankers well, had brakes? Uh, yeah, a tanker can't maneuver and it cut a million dollar gauge right in the side of that destroyer. You know, that tanker is about five, six, seven, eight, maybe ten times bigger than that destroyer. Yeah. And uh, so it's about like some of these people riding up and down Jack for a bike here. You know, they're making them if a freight train was coming down the road and, and making a left turn, they wouldn't yield to the freight train. Yeah. Well, you heard that story where the guy was on the radio and he uh, message was uh, uh, he, he was seeing this here, these lights up ahead and they radioed hold to the port. They would say to who he was, hold to the port. And the guy said, and they sent him back, no, you, you hold to the port. It went on port side, you know, left. 
that went on the timer too, and and then the guy says, the admiral's there, and and, and he comes on there and he says, this is Admiral so and so, and I'm ordering you to hold port. And the other guy wrote back and said, this is a lighthouse, <laughs> you hold the port. <laughs> <laughs> About to run into yeah. the lighthouse. Yeah, huh? it's a lighthouse, and they want him to go around and give them the right away. They want that lighthouse yeah, to move. See, they're looking <laughs> two miles know, down I, through you. You know, uh, them big ships, you got to plan two right. miles ahead. Right. You know, I, I don't, uh, I don't believe in messing with people, say, who are riding up and down the road and that sort of thing. But if there were just some way you could converse with these people. That are running up down Jack or Pike. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't have but six words to say to them. Seven. Seven words. Jobs. J O B S. Jobs. Nine. Maybe nine words to okay, say. Okay, what to would them. that be? Where in the hell are you going so fast? I thought maybe it was one of them four letter, no, one of them four I letter, just, one of them four wanted, letter words like Biden, J O B. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why in the world these people are going in such a hurry, uh, you know. And it's a lot of times it's the same little old car running up up and down the road that's just wide open to go wherever they're going. And when they come, when they get to where they're going, they're just wide open to get back to where they come from. <coughs> I've had people. Come up behind me and pass me on a curb just flying and go a hundred yards and turn off. And turn off and turn off. I, I, it happens all the time. And you think if somebody pulls out in this line of traffic here and somebody's coming down the road, talking about somebody gets ill because they have to slow up a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll blow the horn and cuss and fuss and sometimes they make all kind of gestures, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I, I just don't know where people are going in such a hurry. I used to get mad now. I just laugh. If, I make a, if I've done something stupid, then I feel bad about it. But if they're just being stupid, I don't even upset them. They blow their horn. I just laugh. They don't, they don't wave at them. Me anymore. I don't get upset like that fella. You know, you... You still have some of these cars running around with that old bass, boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Well, I believe it was up in somewhere in Ohio. Uh, this fellow was sitting at the stoplight beside him, boom, boom, boom. He put his car in neutral, got out, took his shotgun, and blew the speakers, <laughs> <laughs> blew the speakers away. Well, about put him under the jailhouse, you know, because yeah. he shot into an occupied car, yeah. you know, which technically, you know, that's a no-no, you know, but. No, who wants to shoot into an empty car? Uh, who wants to shoot into an well, empty well, car? Well, it, he didn't get any time, but he almost did. But he says it was well worth it. <laughs> well, there was a fellow told me one time back um, several years ago. He said him and his buddy is a drinking over in Knoxville, and said they was there downtown, old downtown. It wasn't too lively, and, and they stopped at a red light there, and, and this guy was just sitting there behind them with his lights on bright. Mm -hmm. And the driver was sitting there looking and trying to see the light, and they was just shining everywhere. And he just kind of got aggravated, and he just put it in part and opened the glove box out and got a little hammer out. And said he went back there and he pecked that headlight out, pecked that headlight out, went back in there and put his hammer in and just drove off. <laughs> and I said, well, what did them people do? He said, they were sitting back there with their mouths open, they're afraid to do anything. <laughs> Well, you feel like doing that sometimes, you know. I'm very, very careful when I'm riding along with the lights on bright. If I get up behind somebody, I dim them, you know. And, uh, well, they make them now so bright. I reckon they think everywhere the, these cars they make now, everywhere you drive, they're going to have street lights on. That kind of, that's not a sudden change. You're going down the road and you meet them there big old high octane lights. Right. But if you're out in the country and come around the curve and you'll see these these people will have two big old headlights right. and two other lights and a set of fog lights, right. it looks like they're landing a 747. <laughs> I don't know why they feel safe. If you go, you can see where you're going, you may be safer, but if the other guy can't see where you're at, you're going to get run over anyway. Uh, I meet a lot of them going up Demery. There's some people go uh, goes up Demery, when I, especially when I come down Demery. 
uh, you know, they're coming up. And uh, they got all kinds of lights in the world. They can light up a runway for 747 mm -hmm. to land, you know. Yeah. So, uh, well, there's a lot of things. And I noticed something else, too. Uh, while we, I don't think, I don't think we're talking to anybody that needs to hear what we're saying. Because probably everybody that's listening to this show, uh, they're not guilty of anything we're talking about, and I honestly believe that. Except in politicians. But, as a state law in Tennessee, when you have your windshield wipers on, you're supposed to have your headlights on. Did you know that? No, no. I see people coming down the road, it'll just be raining like all get out, be foggy, you can't see people too good, with no headlights on. And uh, I know they're being macho because they can run along. They don't realize you don't have your headlights on so that they can see better. You got the headlights on so people can see you better. And uh, that was the point on uh, making it mandatory to cut your headlights on if you have uh, your windshield wipers on uh, so people can see you, not so you can see yeah, better. Yeah, I know. But now down at Rainbow Restaurant, you're going to drive in there one more and get your breakfast. I think you'll be happy. Uh, whether you got your lights on or not. They'll get there when it's early you need lights. You said that right. You just pull right on in and Rainbow, Rainbow Restaurant, they going to be there. Got the best deal going on breakfast. Uh, two ninety nine. you get two eggs, you get bacon or sausage or bologna. They might have some other meat, I don't know. Uh, you get uh, grits, or you get uh, gravy, and you get a big old biscuit with it, all for two dollars and ninety nine cents. No, I don't I'm, know what more. If there's something wrong with you, you don't like biscuits, you can get toast. Right, yeah. You, you can got. also get a blowny biscuit down there for ninety nine cents, and right. that'll that'll fill you plumb up. You can't, you can't beat that bologna biscuit. I tell you what, too, you know, there's very few people make. A biscuit big enough to accept a piece of bologna, but you can get them down at Rainbow Restaurant. Another thing, too, if you do your own cooking, you're too stingy to throw away the leftover ingredients and you get sick and have to ride to the hospital, I'd recommend the same route that Bob took. Oh, you, yeah, there ain't but one way to go. 562 9370. That's Vital Care Medical Transport. Privately owned, been in the business about 40 years. They're going to do the job that you need done. No, no, wait a minute. Vital Care has not been in business 40 years. The ones but that the own, run that's running it has the, got more than 40 years. The that runs has been in business 40 years. I agree with you. So uh, that's just the same as Vital Care being in business for 40 years. Well, no, that first few years he didn't have any competition, so he didn't have to try as hard. Well, I know that, but you know, uh, he ain't got no competition now. Well, he's got them there that don't run out of money. Right, he, uh, well, I understand that, but he Well, you know, if you get an ambulance and it breaks down on the way to the hospital, do you call vital care? Uh, probably. Mm -hmm. No, they call sweats. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Just let them tow you to the hospital. <laughs> Be towed right on up to the hospital. Yeah, you know? hold you up there. You know, you're kind of hard on you if you're facing forward and they put you up on that rollback. Right. Right. <laughs> Stand you on your head. Right. I'd be glad Franklin Bun Cannon wasn't in that thing. He'd come out the back. It would be bad. Well, Franklin passed away. He's younger than I am, you know, and uh, uh, probably about 10 years younger than me. But the thing about it is, the old Franklin won't get no older. Well, he'll be forever young then. You know what yeah. they, uh, th there, there's, there's something to be said for, for being in business for yourself and in competition with the government. Most of us are, right. but, but I mean in competition with the government, but it just proves that you can do it more efficiently, more successfully if you're working for yourself because nobody else working for government is ever worried as much about it as they would if it were theirs. Right. Well, you know. Well, you know, even by the government, you know, 
very seldom do they ever fire anybody. I mean, they just promote them. Right. Give them a bonus. They might demote them or something like that. But you know, you got people here in this uh, uh, city that was convicted of a crime of moral turf. Uh, Turp moral turpitude. Turpitude, yep. Moral turpitude. Not to be confused and, uh, with they turpitude. didn't even relieve him from his office. Well, Never was even brought up. Well, uh, what is moral turpitude anyway? Uh, well, that's, something, that's something to know, no, no. You ain't supposed to be doing. Let me ask you a question. Let's just suppose, let's quit talking about government, man. Let's talk about you, Bob. Let's suppose you had some money and pretty good income. And you was a little concerned about, you know, your physical affairs. So you decided to hire you a manager. And you did. You hired your guy to manage your money. And you kept him on for six, eight, ten years and got to checking with him. And you a hundred million dollars in debt. What would you do with him? They probably let him hire two or three more people in his office so they can straighten things out. Well then you could get a job with government. Right. They probably, probably would that's what they've done with our finance director. They hired one to manage our money, and he's put us $100 million in debt. You know, he, I didn't think of that. That's true, ain't it? He's got a staff of, uh, I think, 15 or more. And it takes that staff. many to waste, I mean, to manage that much so money. That, that's right. I mean, does it take more mo more personnel to manage people that you, uh, money that you hadn't got, that you owe, that you're in debt for, than it does to manage money that you got. But the man can work miracles. When they tell him to go off and find a half million dollars, I grab he'd come back and find it. Yeah. But if they tell him, you know, tell us what we, what what's going on, he say, you need a half million dollars, and he'll keep telling them that till they insist that he go hunt it, and he'll come back and found some. I, I, top I shelf. What, sir? Well, I want to go, I want to go hunting this fall. I'm going to hire him instead of taking a bird dog. I'm going to take Jeff Marlowe because, he, he, man, he'll find it. Now, if you get out there wandering around and the boondocks are hunting and your car breaks down and you need some parts, call Napa and they'll find a taxi and send them to you. I believe they're better than Jeff Marlowe about finding parts. I'd say they'd find parts practically anywhere. They can do that. And he told me, you know, I told you I was going to need the... Uh, uh, master cylinder for that uh, uh, bobcat thing I got out mm -hmm. there. He said, just bring the old one up. He says, I'll get you one. That's a NAPA, Napa Auto Parts, That's National Auto Parts Grand, Association Grand Auto Spratman, Parts. Right up there, right across from IGA, right on the four lane. Uh, they are good, 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 good. Whatever you need, they'll get for you. Locally owned and appreciated, and with connections to the wide world of parts, 5629406 or 5622529. Right. What if they Na watch this Napa. show? Huh? What if they watch this hey, show? Napa. Yeah. He always has good intention, and he's caught it a time or two, but I don't think regular. Randy's probably like you and I. No when sleep. he goes home, he's <laughs> tired, you yeah. know. Uh, and I guarantee you, when Ronnie and I go home, we're tired. When we come here and put on this show, we're, I'm tired. You know, I've worked hard. I went, uh, I went to Asheville yesterday. I brought back some delicious, beautiful green beans. I brought back peaches. I brought back tomatoes. Uh, I've got all those. And okra. i got some good okra uh, if you need some okra. And I can sell it to you cheaper than you can go down here on the... Uh, the farm and they charge you more to come down there and, and pick it down there than, it does, than I'm selling it for. Well, I'll tell you what. My problem with that checking out early of the night is I'll go in and just going to rest my eyes a minute and the next thing I know it's middle of the night and all the lights is on and noise everywhere and dogs are barking and then i got to get up and undo all that and go back to bed. <laughs> Well, that happens to me, too. I'll go in. I'll say, well, I'm going to Let's see, when was it? Uh, Sunday night, I was going to leave and go to uh, Asheville like about 2.30, 2 o'clock in the morning. You going to eat at Rainbow? Huh? Was you going to eat at Rainbow? What? Where are well, you? Yeah, yeah, I was going to get up and get me a cup of coffee and a biscuit at Rainbow. And so I laid down like about 8.30. 
I woke up like about two or three o'clock and that bed felt so good I just laid back down. I didn't go to Asheville until about seven o'clock the next morning. So I went over and I made a trip back. I was back by three o'clock. And uh, that's pretty good that's pretty good time to go all the way to Asheville, go to the farmers market, buy what you're gonna get and hit the road back. Did you check on Billy while you was over? Hey. Billy. No. Billy Graham, he's in the hospital. I was busy, Billy in the, in the hospital. I didn't hear that. Did you hear Margaret Thatcher died? No. She died just not too long ago. I heard it on the radio, a news flash right before I came in. So she was 86 years old and she'd been in... Uh, uh, Declining you know, health? Yeah, she'd been in, she'd been sick for several months. And a uh, fine woman, a one, true woman of grit. Uh, uh, not to be confused with Glenn Campbell. No, no. Or what's that other? Kim Dauber. You know Glenn. Dauber. Darby. Glenn, Darby. Glenn's got Dauber. a touch of all kinds. Did you hear that? Huh? Glenn Campbell. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's. I've had that old timer disease now for about 20 years. They tell me it'll make your hair come loose. Well, it'll make your hair fall out. That's what it'll do. Now it'll be all right for a little while, Lee. Hope so. Right. No, you know, I... I don't know about Alzheimer's. I guess if a man don't know what's going on, he's easier to be made happy. Right. But a lot of them seem to be so confused. They stay worried and upset all the time. So right. that can't be no fun. Well, one of my sisters had Dementa. And my other brothers and sisters said, oh, she's crazy. You need to have her put in a mental institution. Yep. Well, I was her power of attorney. I said, no. I said, she worked all of her life. She worked till she was almost 70 years old. She never had anything bad to say about anybody. Always a very sweet and humble person. And I said, as long as she's not a danger to herself or a danger to anybody else, I said, she ain't going nowhere. She, she was a, able to stay in that house about 14 years. After they, they, they worried me for 14 years to put her in, in yeah. the nut house. But, uh, I mean, she, she wasn't that big a problem. The only thing was, She's a lot like me if uh -oh. they come to see her. That's a problem. Hey, uh, if they come to see her, she'd say it, Zach, tell them exactly what she felt about something, you know. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the worst thing you can do in any situation, especially if you're in the political field, is to tell the truth. Yeah. And uh, if you can't tell them the truth, just keep your mouth shut. Right. But uh, she was able to live 14 years. She had a... Uh, had a heart attack, and uh, uh, if she had, uh, I don't know what I could have done, I bought her one of these uh, things you press and call for help, you know, where you say, help, I've fallen down, I can't get up, uh, but she would not wear it, and uh, she had a heart attack, got down the floor, and was there several hours before anybody found her, and of course there was irreversible damage done by that time, and uh, but she would not use the little uh, uh, gizmo that uh, I provided for her, you know. How old was she? 88 years old. That's yeah, pretty good average. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can't figure out how come she died so young. <laughs> now, Moses had that problem. Him and his, his uncle Methuselah. <laughs> you know, I had five aunts that lived to be well over 100 years old. One of them lived to be 109. And uh, I had a one, a 107, 105, 102, and 101, I think, you know, was the ages of my aunts. And, uh, but with that longevity on my side of the family, my daughter married into the family that had the two oldest twins in the world. 
You remember the ones that uh, French? Ronald, Ronald Reagan come to visit? The, the French? Huh? The French? No. Okay. Uh, the ones that Ronald Reagan come to visit I don't remember. when they had their 114th birthday, you know? <laughs> I don't remember. And, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I had a daughter marry one of their nephews, and uh, great nephews, I guess it was. Great nephews. Where your daughters live at? What towns? Well, I have... Uh, Two that live on the outskirts of Ashboro, North Carolina, right off of Highway 64. It goes through there. Then I have another daughter uh, that lives on the, that would be on the uh, east side of, they live on the west side of Ashboro, North Carolina. Uh, my other daughter lives on the east side of Ashburg, right off Highway 64, which goes all the way to Moorhead City. Go down there to the Sanitary Cafe and get you some good fish. Now, hey, we'll take off down there. I'd love to have a bait of that fish, wouldn't you? Yeah, we might just do that when it gets a little colder. Yeah, I'd like to have that. But she lives on the east side uh, of Ashburg. And then uh, my son's daughter, who got married last week, that was my son that got killed. He uh, had a daughter? Yeah. I didn't know he was married. Yeah. He was 26 years old when he got killed. He had a beautiful, beautiful daughter. Well, you can't tell my oldest daughter, Amanda, and this one too much apart. They look so so identical, you know. But she's very pretty. She graduated from the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. And uh, she got married last week. And What's she, she going to be when she grows up? Uh, She's going to be a school teacher. And uh, uh, she uh, she had lived with my ex-wife. My ex-wife more or less uh, looked after and raised her because her, her mother remarried. And uh, uh, naturally, you don't get along too well with in-laws and outlaws and that sort of thing. So uh, her grandmother, uh, more or less, she, she lived with her grandmother. And uh, uh, so uh, she's a very, very sweet person, very, very sweet young lady, very, very pretty young lady. And uh, uh, I had some pretty daughters. They took after their your wives. Yeah, right. Uh, my three daughters that uh, we just talked about, they're about uh, one of them four years apart, and the other one's three years apart. You know, three years younger. This one's three years younger. And this one, this one's four years younger. And one of them's seven years apart. Uh, one of them's seven. Yeah, well, one of them is. But, uh, <laughs> I thought maybe that might have been one of their factories all, over there when they all went. All three of them were homecoming queens, and there is by the vote of the uh, uh, the student body. It's not who brings in the most money like it is here. Uh, well, I thought maybe that uh, your daughter's in the furniture business over there, ain't she? Uh, the, the oldest one. I thought uh, maybe that was where um, Romney and um, Ryan went the other day. I think they went to Hickory, didn't they? I don't know. They was over at some furniture factory. I believe they went to Hickory, Hickory, North Carolina. And uh, now down in High Point, North Carolina, uh, they, they need to go down there. That's somewhat Obama-dominated uh, area there. Uh, uh. Well, there's one other thing I'd like to tell you. If you need any heavy hauling done, you need to get Ridge Runner Truck and them big blue trucks to do it. 871-2410. Yeah, I saw one of them big trucks going down the road today. Heavily loaded. Had the tarp pulled back so it didn't didn't Throw blow no, away. And it didn't throw nothing off on nobody. And uh, if you need some hauling, if you need your driveway gravel before winter sets in so you don't get marred up in your own driveway, if you got a parking area that you need gravel, or if you need a big load of mulch, you need a big load of topsoil uh, or field dirt or whatever you need, you just call Ridge Runner Trucking Company, 871-2410, and uh, they will fix you up in fine style with whatever you need. You can't get any better hauling or any lower rates anywhere that I know of. And if you need a big load of windows and a big load of doors and a big load of linoleum kitchen rugs, and you know a lot of people are putting that in their living room now to get rid of all them air 
Well, my people, people got no coots nowadays. They put kitchen rugs in the living room, you know. That's living all. room rugs in the right. kitchen. In and fact, it's, if I you got a bedroom, I got to have some kitchen rugs to go in. If you need a, you need a, if you need a big load of roofing, uh, just call five six two two six seven six. That's it right there. Right. And uh, we we'll get you fixed up. Right. Ronnie's got some good stuff here. He's got. Uh, Vinyl siding, he's got. I left that, that out. Forgot vinyl. that. I forgot about the vinyl siding. You got, got that too. I know you did. You got vinyl siding, and I tell you, I paid more for vinyl siding 40 years ago than you charging right now. That's and right, right when it first come out, it's very, very expensive. And they uh, put it in the Titanic. Huh? They put it in the Titanic. What vinyl siding? No, no, no. Linoleum rugs. Oh. I was, I was off on something else. They put. I read that they wouldn't have hardwood or anything like that because it wasn't expensive and modern enough. They put right. linoleum in the Titanic. Right. I guess that's why it sunk. <laughs> Probably. If you don't want your house to sink, <laughs> buy some linoleum because they've improved it a lot right. since yeah, then. Sure since 1912. I might mention, you know, while we're talking a little bit about stuff for sale, I talked to you about my tomatoes and my okra and my green beans and my peaches. I got a lot of other things for sale. If you need a de dehumidifier for your house, I've got two of them, and they work. They will extract the water out of the air. But they won't and take it and pour it out in the yard. For your lily pond or your uh, mushroom farm, uh, I've got one. I also, I also uh, uh, have some beautiful furniture. I've got some beautiful uh, dressers. I've got good appliances. I've got washers and dryers and... I sold my last refrigerator uh, earlier today. I sold it yesterday and delivered it today. So uh, I'm out of refrigerators, but I'll probably have some more here in a day or two. So I got washers, dryers, I got cook stoves. I got one propane stove, the cook stove that I will sell. Uh, I don't really care whether I do or not, but uh, I will sell that one. So what was it Dave Garraway used to say? Huh? Dave Garraway, when he was going off, he'd say, peace. He didn't go peace, he went, right. peace. Right. Yeah, not and how, how or how. Yeah. How tall was Dave Garraway? I don't know. He was a big old tall fella, you know. Dave Garraway, I don't know, he killed himself, didn't he? Uh, yeah, he, ended up, he, he was a big old tall fella. We're going to go, folks. Appreciate you watching. See you we'll tomorrow be on, night on, we'll be on Channel 12 at 8 o'clock. And right here again at 8 o'clock tomorrow right. night. We appreciate You're you well. watching. Been a Thank Been you, a brother. joy talking at you. Thank you. Let me get it signed off now. Which one am I on? Okay. Yeah.